Hi everybody, welcome back to Zephyr Trails. I'm Randy and we recently posted a video about our trip down to Hatsboro, Pennsylvania to pick up our Thunderbird and that uh, video had a few interesting comments and some interest in the car so we thought we'd do a follow-up video. One of the comments that we've had from that video was, do we still have our Mustang? Yes, we still have the Mustang. For many of you who have not seen this car before, it's typically just been in the background. We've never really featured it in any of our videos, but this is our 1992 Mustang GT convertible. We bought this car new. I've had it for over 30 some years. It's been a lifelong project for mine. I've done a ton of modifications to this car. It is not stock. It is completely customized. The engine's been modified. There's a lot done to it. <clears throat> and if you'd like to know more about this car, leave me a comment and I'll do a video on it in the future. But for now, we're going to concentrate on the Thunderbird and we're going to kind of talk about what I found that's, that needs to be fixed on this car to sort it out. What's some of the best things about it? What are some of the worst things about it? And we're kind of just give you a little bit of a tour of the car. So first, Let's get rid of this and let's start that tour. So those of you who may have missed our previous video of going to Hasbro and picking this car up, I'll leave a link to it above, above us. But this is a 1989 Ford Thunderbird Super Coupe. This car was the top of the line Thunderbird available for that year. It was a brand new design for the Thunderbird, came out in 1989 and this car is a very nice example of that. It is pretty much fully loaded with options. It has a sunroof, has leather interior, it's an automatic, and the car is in excellent condition. It has 39,000 miles on it. Uh, tires were all replaced on the car. There was a bunch of maintenance done to the car before we picked it up. So it's in very, very good condition but it does have a few things it needs to have done to be completely sorted. And that's what we're gonna go talk about now. One of the first things that we were told about this car was that the air conditioning doesn't work, which is pretty typical of a car this age. The, if it's not maintained and taken care of, the air conditioner will lose its charge. Tip, a lot of times the O-rings will um, harden up and won't seal and the Freon will leak out, which is what I suspect is probably the problem here. Um, but I don't know for sure if it's anything else wrong with it. It possibly could need a new air conditioning compressor too um, when we go and dig into that. So that's almost number one on my list to take a look at um, and resolve. There is one issue that Diane noticed with the interior that I'll show you and that is the top of the leather on the rear seat where it's in the rear window has discolored and that would need to be re-dyed. Uh, fortunately, I have a friend who does that for a living. Um, he refurbishes car interiors for car dealers, and so he's offered to come out and take a look at this and take care of that for me. So that should sort out the interior pretty well. The radio does need to be repaired. It currently just has static and no music or anything. It is just a AM FM cassette player radio and so I'm exploring options about where I can get that fixed because I don't really want to put an aftermarket radio in the dash because it just wouldn't look right um, but I'm also looking at can I have that radio modified and add Bluetooth to it so that I can sync my phone which would give us much more modern capabilities of playing mp3s or um, streaming some type of uh, satellite radio service so that's something we're looking at 
when I was bringing the car home, I did crawl underneath it while it was up on the trailer. I figured I'd have an opportunity to look underneath. And everything looked pretty good. The exhaust system had been recently replaced and uh, everything else seemed to look good. One thing I did notice was the ball joints. They, the car seems to be tight as far as driving and tracking down the road, so I don't think it's an issue with them being worn. But I think the age of the ball joints has, has allowed the rubber boots around them to start to deteriorate and crack. So that's on my list to replace. I'm going to replace all the ball joints in the front of the car and kind of just more of a preventive maintenance issue than a really need to have it done. I probably could just leave it like it is and considering the amount of driving we would do with the car, it probably would be fine for a while, but it's going to have to be done at some time and I figure why not just get it taken care of. There was one other issue with the interior of the car. This piece of plastic right here on the inside along the windshield was cracked and it had been repaired, but the repair job wasn't very good. They basically used a plastic welder um, with heat and melted in some black plastic on the back side of it to glue the broken pieces together. But it stood out because the black had kind of bled through to the inside of it and the inside is actually gray plastic. So it stood out quite bad. Um, I was actually able to find a replacement part on eBay, though it was a little expensive by the time I had it shipped here. I was able to put a new one in and it looks brand new. Well, let's pull the camera off and give you a little bit more of a tour. start by giving a tour of the inside of the car. Hey, wait a minute. We picked up some hitchhikers. Who are these guys? Doc, what do you think of the car? Taking it out for a little bit of a ride. If you don't mind, I'm going to uh, ask you to step out for a minute and so I can show these nice people what the car looks like. You can see that the car has a upgraded interior. These are considered the sport seats and these bolsters here are completely adjustable. There's remotes down here that I can move them in and out. They also have a lateral airbag in the back of the seat for your lumbar support. Um, all this stuff works. The one thing on the seats that doesn't work very well is the uh, power adjustment forward and back. And I'm not gonna play with it, but when I try to move the seat backwards, it goes really, really slow and I think it needs to be, at the very least, it needs to be taken apart, cleaned, and make sure everything, there's nothing gumming it up, but it possibly could need a new motor or a new drive gear. This is the back seat, probably hardly ever used. This is the radio in a car. It does turn on uh, when I power it up, as you can see here, but that's all you get, just static. So that's something that I'm gonna, I'm hopefully I can get repaired and updated with Bluetooth. If you look over here at this side, you can see the odometer and you can see the mileage and the car actually only has 39,585 miles, which is really low for a 35 year old car. So that's one of the positives that one of the reasons it sold us on this car was that low mileage. It has as an option automatic headlights, which is kind of cool for this age of a car. I know obviously cars today, pretty much all of them come with this, but this has the ability to um, set, you know, how far off do we want the high beams to dim? And how long do we want the headlights to stay on after you shut the vehicle off? I think those are a couple of neat options. Down here you have the AC controls and they're pretty much standard. Um, what's kind of neat though is this is pre 
um, where you could set the temperature or the dual climate control. It's previously of cars actually having that. Um, so interesting there. See, it has sunroof with a shade that it can be closed. Power control right here for that. Dual visors with mirrors, which is nice. The audio system is a JBL system, and I'll show you what that entails in the trunk. Here in the trunk, this is the JBL sound system. This is a subwoofer, and up here underneath this tray is a amplifier. So that's what gives it the better sound system. You can also see here are a few things that I've picked up for the car. I've picked up repair manuals and actually was able to get an actual Ford uh, shop manual for the car. So this goes into all kinds of detail um, on different parts of the, different aspects of the car. Um, it's got troubleshooting guides in here and everything. So I think this will be very helpful as we do re different repairs. But also I found that the Chilton book and the Haynes books are very helpful too to do just normal type of repairs. One last thing I did pick up for the car is a sales brochure. And so this is a 89 Thunderbird sales brochure that you would have gone to the dealer and picked up. This is the engine compartment. As you can see, as cars are these days, it is quite packed with stuff. This even more so because it does have the supercharger here. So you have the additional inlet tubing. Uh, this is an intercooler that uh, cools the air charge after it goes through the supercharger before it goes into the motor. Looks like it has a brand new battery, probably replaced within the last year. Actually 1223, so it was done less than a year ago. Another feature on the car that I think is really kind of neat, has this automatic ride control on the shock absorbers. Basically the shock absorbers have two different settings and there's a switch on the dash and you can change that switch from comfort to firm and this system still works perfectly. As you go down the road, if you click it on firm and you go over uh, an expansion joint in the highway, it feels firm, it's stiff, and then when you turn it off, it's real floaty and comfortable. So I thought that was kind of neat that it has that option and, and it's still working quite well. One thing about these older cars with the plastic headlights, is they tend to discolor and get yellow. And these are looking pretty good. A little bit around the edges here, maybe when it's sealed, but not bad. Um, you know, probably just a light polish. There's really no moisture or anything in there. So they look pretty good. So there you have it. There's a quick tour of our 1989 Ford Thunderbird Super Coupe. As you can see, there's not a lot that needs to be done. A couple major things, get the air conditioner fixed, check out the front ball joints to make sure that they're not an issue and get them replaced. But basically, it's a really solid car that I can get in and drive right now. And we've put a few miles on it, um, not a lot, less than 100 so far in the, last, the first couple of weeks we had it. Partially because I've had a little bit of an issue with the insurance company and getting the insurance policy on the car. Not that there was any issue insuring the car, but just communicating with them. The insurance policy is now on the car, so the car is covered, and we can take it out for a little bit of a ride when we want to, weather permitting. This is not going to be a foul weather car. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little video on the Thunderbird, a little more of an update of what's wrong with it, what's got to be done to it. If you want to know more about the Thunderbird or the Mustang, Leave us a comment and let us know, and we will feature them in future videos. But this will not be a car channel. This is going to be more of a camping channel, which is what it's always been. So these will just be little add-ins that we do occasionally. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and hit the bell for notifications so we post new videos on a weekly basis, and we'd love to have you guys follow along. Until then, we will see you guys down the road. Take care, everybody.
Oh, 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 oh,